Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on work and energy. The topic of this video is mechanical energy conservation and we want to know under what conditions is mechanical energy conserved and what is meant when we say mechanical energy is conserved. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discuss what happens when non-conservative external forces do not work upon an object. I've left a link to the video in the description section of this one if you need to review it. In the video, I mentioned that when non-conservative external forces do not work upon a system, it causes the total mechanical energy of the system to change. These types of forces can transfer energy across the system boundary. When the work that's done is positive work, the force is in the direction of the motion, then the energy of the system increases. But if the work is negative work, and the force is in the opposite direction of the motion, then it causes the total mechanical energy of the system to decrease. In both cases, we'll use this equation to relate the total amount of energy initially, kinetic plus potential, to the total amount that is finally present within the system. The W and C in this equation is the work done by non-conservative forces. We'll be using the same equation in this video, except we'll be making a small adjustment to it, as you'll soon see. In this video, I'll be discussing what happens when the work done by non-conservative external forces is zero joules. When conservative forces, such as the force of gravity or the spring force, are the only forces doing net work upon the system, then the total mechanical energy of the system is conserved. Potential energy can be converted to kinetic energy, or vice versa, kinetic converted to potential, but the sum of these two forms of energy remains constant. As an illustration, let's consider a projectile, an object upon which the only force is gravity. W and C would be zero for a projectile. Let's assume that at launch it has zero joules of potential energy, it's on the ground, and 100 joules of kinetic energy. The total mechanical energy is 100 joules. When it reaches the peak of its trajectory. It's run out of all of its vertical speed and its kinetic energy would have decreased to say 20 joules. Potential energy would be 80 joules in order for the total to be 100 joules. When it reaches its original height, its launch height, it would be back to zero joules of potential energy so just before striking the ground it would have to have 100 joules of kinetic energy again. The total is 100 joules. All along the course of its trajectory we would notice that the potential energy would be decreasing and the kinetic increasing, or vice versa, but the total amount remains 100 joules. So in such situations when the only forces doing work are conservative forces, such as gravity, the total mechanical energy remains constant. So when we say that mechanical energy is conserved, we mean that the total amount of it is constant. You might remember from a few slides back this equation. Total mechanical energy is conserved whenever the W and C term in that equation is zero. In effect, it cancels out of the equation, and the equation becomes this one. The kinetic plus the potential initially is equal to the kinetic plus potential energy finally. To illustrate, let's consider a skier that's traveling uphill. It would lose its kinetic energy and gain potential energy as it travels uphill. It would start initially with a lot of kinetic and a little potential, but by the time it reaches the top of the hill, it would have very little kinetic and a lot of potential. And as the skier skis down the hill, it would lose its potential energy but gain its kinetic energy. It would start with a lot of potential and a little kinetic, but would finish with a lot of kinetic energy and a little potential energy. But the amount of total mechanical energy initially is equal to the amount it has finally in both of these cases. The motion of a pendulum provides another example of mechanical energy conservation. A pendulum is a small object, known as a bob, attached by a string to a fixed point. As the bob moves along its circular arc, there's always two forces that act upon the bob. There's the force of gravity acting downwards, and there's the tension force that acts along the direction of the string. Tension is a non-conservative force, but it does not do work upon the pendulum bob, because as the bob moves along its circular arc, the force of tension is always directed perpendicular to the motion of the bob. Such forces cannot do work upon objects when the angle between F and the direction of 
motion is a 90 degree angle. So the only force doing work upon the pendulum is the force of gravity, a, not, a, a conservative force, and thus mechanical energy is conserved. Numerically, we could represent the situation by a diagram like this. At position 1, the highest location, the pendulum bob has 0 joules of kinetic energy and 8 joules of potential energy. The total is 8 joules. As it moves to position 2, it has lost some potential energy and gained some kinetic energy, but the total energy remains 8 joules. At the lowest location, position 3, it has run out of all of its potential energy. It has all kinetic energy, 8 joules, but the total is still 8. When it moves upward, it begins to lose some of this kinetic energy and gain some potential energy. As it moves along its circular arc downwards, it's losing potential and gaining kinetic, and as it moves upwards, it's losing kinetic and gaining potential. This concept is often illustrated by a bar chart diagram. Bar chart shows the relative amount of kinetic and potential energy over the course of motion, and it often shows the total amount of energy. You'll notice in this animation, again, as the pendulum moves downwards, it's losing its potential energy and gaining its kinetic energy. And as it moves upwards, it's losing its kinetic energy and gaining its potential energy. But the total mechanical energy of a pendulum bob remains constant over the course of its motion. The up and down motion of a roller coaster car demonstrates the same idea of mechanical energy conservation. On a roller coaster car, there are two forces, the force of gravity, a conservative force directed downwards, and the normal force, a non-conservative force directed perpendicular to the track at all locations. And as such, it's always at a 90 degree angle to the direction of motion. And whenever a normal force and the direction of motion are at a 90 degree angle, that normal force does not do work upon the object. Object. So we expect mechanical energy conservation. So that means that as the roller coaster car moves downwards, it loses its potential energy and gains kinetic energy. And as it moves upwards, it would gain potential energy and lose kinetic energy. There's this conservation of total mechanical energy while the potential energy is converted to kinetic energy and vice versa. As we notice here in the animation, the speeds are always greatest at the lowest location where the kinetic energy is greatest, and the speeds are always smallest at the highest location where the potential energy is the greatest and the kinetic energy is the smallest. As a final example of mechanical energy conservation, let's consider a ski jumper. The normal force on the ski jumper is perpendicular to the surface and as such can't do work upon the ski jumper. Mechanical energy is conserved since the only force doing work is a conservative force, the force of gravity. So as the ski jumper moves downwards, its potential energy begins to decrease and its kinetic energy begins to increase. When it has finally reached its lowest, potential, lowest position where the potential energy is zero, its kinetic energy is the maximum and it's now traveling the fastest. If you've been around a physics course for a while, you may have noticed some terms and problems like ignore air resistance, assume negligible friction, assuming mechanical energy is conserved. These terms don't represent reality. They represent idolizations or approximations to reality. The fact is, there really is some air resistance and some friction acting on objects as they move. And these forces are non-conservative forces and do negative work on objects so as to remove some of their mechanical energy. These are dissipative forces that change the mechanical energy into non-mechanical forms such as thermal energy and vibrational energy. Here's a table showing what we just saw with the ski jumper, with the potential and the kinetic energy being shown. This is the ideal kinetic energy when we assume negligible friction and air resistance. But if we were to add a column for the real kinetic energy when friction and air resistance are considered, we'd have a different situation. For instance, at 60 meters, we might notice 16,000 joules of kinetic energy instead of the 20,000 joules of the ideal situation. 4,000 joules of mechanical energy being converted to the non-mechanical forms like thermal and vibrational energy. At 40 meters, we might notice 24,000 joules of kinetic energy instead of the 30,000 joules of kinetic energy in the ideal situation. Once more, a dissipation of energy from mechanical to non-mechanical forms. And at 20 meters, it might be 30,000 joules of kinetic energy instead of 40,000 joules of kinetic energy, and so forth. So the fourth column represents the real situation with dissipated energy. energy 
energy being transformed from mechanical to non-mechanical form. But the third column is an idealization or approximation to reality, which we often use to illustrate a concept. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources that you'll find on our website. I've left links to each of them in the description section of this video. You have a Minds on Physics mission and a Concept Builder. These are questioning modules that always make great follow-ups to a video. Then there's a calculator pad section with a set of problems. You'll find a problem, an answer, and an audio guided solution to the answer. And finally, there's a simulation that allows you to change a variable and see the effect upon a motion. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.